Hey, how's it going everybody? So if you've been following along at all with this uh, twin spark, two stroke engine build, uh, you should have seen all the progress up to this point. Uh, the last thing I did was I just put some um, just electrical connections in place of the, uh, uh, what's it called, electrical tape, uh, just as a more stable <laughs> solution for right now. Uh, still working it out, so I didn't want to. I'm not. Do, I'm not doing any soldering until I get some of the things worked out. But uh, I needed this so that none of the spark would escape. So I tested for spark on both of these, just using. Um, I'm find it real fast. Where is it? Hold on a second. Uh, just using one of these, just a basic spark tester. Obviously, this is not foolproof, but it'll help you uh, work out some of the kinks. And I just needed to make sure that I was generating uh, spark in both of my coils, which was important. So I have two coils running off the same uh, the same pack, basically, over the flywheel. So you can see that spinning in there. Uh, I want to go over some numbers basically before I continue this build because I, I'm nearing the initial testing phase, uh, but I, I did some things to the engine that's going to require some some special changes that I have to go over. Uh, so these are I just some recording numbers as I go uh, that I'm going to need reference in the future. So first thing you'll see is spark plug offset. What in the world is that? So let me explain what this is. So basically because I put two spark plugs in, this spark plug to the left is the one that came on the cylinder. The spark plug to the right is the one that I tapped and put in. Now, if you notice ever so slightly, the one to the right is a little bit lower. And it has to be because of the position of this one. The position, the position of this one that came on the cylinder is slightly offset to the left uh, just by a tiny fraction. Uh, because of that, it allows me to put another spark plug to the right, but I can't put it uh, perfectly reflected over the next, uh, over the uh, Y axis. Because if I did, you would have collision at the ends of the spark plugs and that wouldn't work. So I had to bump this down a tiny bit to allow the slightest bit of clearance, basically like this. Because if I put it here, it would it would hit. But if I, if I put it down lower, uh, it, get, it grants me enough clearance, um, essentially. But I also had to make sure that this spark plug isn't in all the way as this one, because basically what I'm doing is you don't want this, you don't want this to happen, basically firing over another spark plug. You want them to be hitting at uh, different points on the cylinder head or the piston. Uh, so I had to offset this ever so, or not offset, but I had to bump this out ever so slightly to accommodate that. Uh, basically, so my spark plug offset refers to how much gap I had to leave here so the spark plug can't thread in all the way, just because it's already sitting lower. So if I thread it all the way in, it would, what I just said would happen. So I had to bump this out 2.25 millimeters. Um, you can convert that inches in inches to you like, if you like, but I got, uh, I just used my feeler gauge and I just stacked how many feeler gauges I needed before, uh, before the piston would not hit the second spark plug. And I want, I needed it as close as I could possibly get it because I don't want to alter the timing numbers too significantly, but I also, uh, don't want to put a ton more, uh, I don't want to increase the squeeze on the top of the cylinder all that much because that's going to throw off a whole bunch of compression stuff that I'm going to have to figure out. Uh, but basically, I needed to keep the squeeze as tight as I possibly could, still allowing for clearance of the second spark plug. That was my that was my goal, and the number that allowed me to do that, where I put where I tapped the uh, spark plug, is 2.25 millimeters. So that was important. Uh, the next one I had to do to give myself enough clearance for the additional spark plug is you'll see I had to actually add another base gasket. Now typically you're going to delete a base gasket if you're trying to increase your, your uh, compression, but I had to add an additional base gasket, which that added about 0.75 millimeters, which is about 0.03 inches. Uh, again, that's not a lot. To put that into perspective, um, 
Let's see if I can find that. 0.03, uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.03. I don't know where my 0.03 is. Did I? Oh, that's 0 .00. <laughs> that's 0 .003. I'm like, wait a second, that's not. Okay, this one's close. Yes, I'll just use this one. So, put in perspective, this is 0 .3, 0 .035 inches, 0 .88 millimeters. Uh, that's not a lot of thickness, guys. But that's what I had to increase it to give myself enough clearance. So, I just added another base gasket down here. Now, what this is going to do, or at least what I think this is going to do is... Uh, for one, it's going to throw off my compression ratio. It's going to change it because now we've increased the total volume that the piston moves from bottom dead center to top dead center. So we're gonna we should uh, we should see a different ratio. I'm assuming, unless I <laughs> unless I'm looking at that wrong. But uh, so what I'm thinking is we'll need to uh, increase the air intake or how much air we're allowing to fill the total volume because we've increased it. Uh, if we want to maintain a, a high compression ratio. So I'm going to increase the intake port a little bit to allow more airflow in here. Uh, I haven't determined yet what I'm going to have to do for the for the exhaust port yet because we have uh, greater uh, volume here. So I'll have to figure out what I'm going to how I'm, how I'm going to have to adjust the blowdown, the exhaust blowdown. Um, I haven't, I haven't decided it. I have to, I have to consider that. I may leave it as is, uh, increase the intake port a little bit, run it and see what happens before I make any adjustments to the exhaust. That's what I'm thinking I might do just to help myself troubleshoot a little bit. But again, we've added 0.75 millimeters, uh, with the additional base gasket. The next one I, 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 I have been using is, uh, or adjusting with is a coil air gap distance. So originally I set it at 0.25 millimeters. I've since brought that down to 0.2, which is 0 0.008 inches. Uh, I think that's a good that's a good distance. It's a very conservative distance. It's not it's not super low. It's not inching your 0 0.004, but I think 0 0.008 is a safe distance that we can use for this engine. I want it to be as close as possible, pretty much, uh, but still be fairly conservative of a gap. So, uh, I th there's no rubbing. I think it's all, I think it's all correct as it is now. Uh, it makes really good compression. I don't have my spark plugs as tight as I can right now, but, uh, we're making really good compression. It feels even having these ports open. So, uh, I did change the gasket on the, uh, the crankcase down here. Um, so we should be good guys. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is potential leaking out of my uh out of the tap out of the spark plug i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that if we do leak not a big deal at all we can just put some uh some fuel resistant gasket sealer around the uh, spark plug and that should seal right up so if there is a leak that's an easy fix uh what else do we have to talk about um those are all the numbers i have right right now obviously i have to get the list of the the timing numbers with some of the changes that we've made um Honestly, guys, I may wait to get those timing numbers until I run this and see what happens, just so I have an idea in my head of what's what's actually happening. It's hard to put, it's hard to convert numbers from timing to, you know, how this is going to run if you haven't run it yet. So, I think that's what we're going to do, just to give ourselves, hey, well, one, does it even run? That's the big question that I want to uh, to address. I mean, this is really a proof of concept for myself. This is a, this is essentially. Uh, just a junkyard engine that I found. Uh, so I just need, I just really want to see if this works because the ultimate goal is guys, I want to be able to reduce, um, I, you could call it efficiency, but I, I want to be able to reduce your, uh, how much fuel leaks out of the exhaust per, per stroke. Um, there's a technical term for what's it what's it called uh oh my goodness i it slipped my mind i'll put it in the i'll put it in the comments but uh, i'm trying to increase i want to make this more efficient because what i'm thinking is if you have two spark plugs you're still going to have some some excess fuel even after the ignition the uh initial spark so i want to have two to see if i can eliminate so much excess that ultimately comes out of the exhaust so we can take more advantage of hey 
let's look at the fuel and air uh, mixture that we have in here. And if we have two uh, spark plugs, let's, I'm trying to make better use of the total uh, air fuel mixture at the top. That's what I want to do. Um, oh my goodness, that's going to bug me that, that what that, I literally was just looking at that term earlier. Um, engine, what are we thinking about? I don't know, I'll post in the count. I'll post it in the description though. Uh, but yeah, so this is some of the technical numbers that we had to go over right now that I'm working on. Um, I'm in the process of rebuilding it. So if you have any questions or anything, let me know. The, honestly, this is a, this is, tr I'm trying to make this a proof of concept for these kind of engines. So uh, this may, this might work and it may not work. And if it doesn't work, then we have some investigation to do as to why not. Uh, truthfully, I don't see any reason why this won't work. Uh, I think I got the angles correct. I think I got the spark plug seated fine. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm optimistic about this. The one thing I think we might have to change that I was a little nervous to change, um, I'm a little nervous about is I'm not convinced that we're sending enough, uh, power to each of these coils for the spark guys. That's the, my biggest concern. Um, and if that's the case, and if we have some sparking issues, um, we may have to put two coil ignition coils on this thing, guys. Uh, which again is is possible. We could definitely do it. We'll just have to make a custom bracket around here. 100% doable. Uh, I do. I would just have to get another ignition coil, um, or fix the other one. Uh, this is a, this is some cheap one. So I would just take the lead off, or I might just get another one and, and go from there. But uh, that's the one potential issue that I'm most worried about that may prove to be problematic. But we will we'll find out. Uh, but anyway, guys. Um, this has been a really fun build. I'm looking forward to seeing this thing run. I mean, I don't know. It, it We'll have to do a lot of calculations and a lot of look at the numbers to see what's actually happening in the event that this does run to, to see, okay, hey, how is this actually affecting emissions, efficiency, and um, fuel leakage out of the exhaust. So anyway, guys, that's, that's what I got. So let me know if you have any uh, feedback or anything on this project. And uh, yeah, have a good one.